and I'm going to show you the best thing is a calculator. Ah, here it is from the Securities and Exchange Commission. So you can go to a website, investor.gov. Let me share screen here. So, you know, I like calculator.com, but this one here is from the Securities and Exchange Commission. Uh, let me just expand this here. I don't know why it's not expanding. Oh, yeah, here it is. Okay, so here is a calculator. Um, and the website, I don't know if you see it on top there, is investor.gov. Okay, so yes, securities and exchange. Rate. So I will use, I was using before the calculation of people that invest in my fund and people that we set up for funds. Let me show you how it works. So let's say in, in, in my fund, mixif.com, or sfifund.com. I have Reg D506B that I set up a long time ago in 2009, and Reg D506C, which is called SFI Fund. They're sister funds. They literally, I can raise publicly, and we do partnership between my funds and other funds as well if I have students that come up with stuff. But here's the deal. Initial investment, to get 8% per year, you need to put 250,000. So here's 250,000. Monthly contribution, you're gonna contribute nothing else. You're just gonna put 250 and you're gonna leave it. Length of time in years, let's say you leave it for 10 years. Most calculations for compounding interest uh, by companies, they tell you you're gonna let it compound for years itself. Even Warren Buffett calculates that, hey, look, the people waited with me over 40 years on average 42 years and that's why they have so much money okay but let's just say 10 years estimated interest rate well it's not estimated we pay eight percent that's a fixed interest we pay it's not like stock market four percent ten percent then they lose money then they do 12 then they do four and then it averages to x because that's very misleading because if you lose some if you lose 50 percent you can't gain 50 percent come back to the same amount if you have 100 you lost 50 percent you have 50. You need to come back with 100% just to break even. But I'm saying we pay 8% per year. We pay it twice a year, February 28th, August 31st. So interest rate variance range, there is no variance. Compound frequency is not annually, it's semi-annually. It's February 28th, August 31st, every six months. It compounds, look, your estimated annual percentage interest rate and how often is it compounded. It's 8% per year compounded every six months. That means 4%, 4%. So, so let's see. They're getting 8% per year on the 250,000. So how much will they have? Well, they will have 547,780. So it's about 548,000. Well, let's say, let's say 550, just to make the numbers easy. So for, for 10 years, the person had to do nothing. We just invested their money and kept sending them statements every six months saying we're reinvesting your money. So they really put 250, but they have 547. So if we, if you take your calculator, just take your calculator and put 547, let's just round it to 550, just so easy calculation. 550 minus the original 250. So you have 300,000 in profit over how many years? Over 10 years. So divided by 10, you have 30,000 a year. 30,000 a year divided by 250,000 that you invested will give you 12% a year. And you're sitting here thinking, Sharif, wait a minute, but you said you're paying me 8%. Yes, but I'm reinvesting it, so it's compounding. So it's not 8%, it's 12%. 12% and you did nothing other than put 250 and went on with your life. So imagine somebody puts this now for, this is when it gets exciting, in case you're not excited because I see some faces here not too excited. All right, I'm sorry, I'll get you better numbers here in a second. Um, so now let's say, provide feedback, no, no thanks. Let's say you leave it, not for 10 years, let's say you've been in the fund with me like the few that joined me early on, 15 years. We set up the fund, you can see it online on the SEC that we set up in 2009, this is 15 years. We're doing payout now, coming up in February 28th, like in literally 25 days, and I see people have been with me so long, look, eight hundred ten thousand dollars on the 250 so let's just do the calculation if i put eight hundred ten thousand minus eight hundred ten minus the original 250 they put in it's five hundred sixty thousand divided by 15 years that's thirty seven thousand three thirty three per year the thirty seven thousand three thirty three divided by two hundred fifty thousand 
is 14.93. That's that means they made 15% per year. Do you understand Warren Buffett was worth $30 million when he was age 42? By age 61, he was already worth billions. Today, he is one of the richest people in the world due to the compounding effect. And, and it wasn't even his money that he started. He started with very little money. So, so I have this lady uh, that uh, her mom had passed away and she inherited money. She knew my wife at the time and she put 250,000 because she was actually struggling to put the 250. She put first 200 and took a couple of weeks and then she put the other 50 because she had to settle something with her brother on the inheritance. But she said to me, I'm gonna put 250 because my kids, she had a divorcer. It was a kid one year old. She just had another baby. It was just too devastating. But then she said, what do you think is the best? Because I need to have enough money when they go to college. And I said, well, reinvest the 8%. Today, she's been in the fund 15 years. Like I'm looking at the next payout and I'm looking at the statement. I thought there is a mistake. This happens every now and then. And I called the CPA. I said, how on earth there is so much money? How could she have 800 some thousand? And he said, Sharif, she's been reinvesting. I said, but it's impossible. He said, well, let's do the calculation. So we pull this thing and the lady have half a million over. She, she sold some other things. So she sent the oldest kid to college just from other sales. So she has not even needed to cash out. When she reaches a million, I think she's gonna cash out, which will be a mistake. In my opinion, she should keep it longer. But you understand the power of compounding that I'm paying 8%, but she got 15. And then a few years before she got 12. And yet people, what they do, they wanna become rich right away. So they go into crazy things, they lose the money. They go through crazy things, they lose the money. They go through unscrupulous things. People offering them 15% IRR, internal rate of return. Talk to anybody, how much did they actually end up making annual rate of return? It's maybe 7%. And if so much was offered, the, the syndicators already made their money on the initial thing because they charge fees, we charge no fees. No fees, the 8% is paid. and pure 8%. So if you are looking at how to invest your capital in the, with the least amount of effort, you have to have a formula, which is you put it, you compound the return and you wait a decent period of time and you don't have to reinvest new capital. When you own a building, you can do it because you also have a debt that gets paid down by the tenant and it keeps increasing. However, periodically you have to come up with more money. The bank wants to renew the loan because it's uh, 25 years doing five. So you have to have the cash reserves. So at the end of the day, you may end up pretty close to the passive investing. I often say I set up the real estate fund to save you from yourself because I've seen what people do trying to make money. When they started with good money, they could have actually kept it like this lady who wanted to focus on raising her two kids and ended up with way more money than her friends who had the money and went into projects. This guy bought a tire company and then the tire company changed the franchise they sold. Now they want him out of business. They want to take him over. You can live life and decide which game you want to play. The compounding game is the end goal, whether you buy a building or you buy into a fund that keeps reinvesting for you. So that's my spiel on compounding.